and uh, just started chapter 12 last week, which is really the more starting more the practical section of the book. And we talked about the whole thing of of living lives of sacrifice, and we really emphasize this thing of it's got to be done as response to God's mercy. If we're not doing it as a response, it can really get legalistic or it can just be something we have to do. And we said that Christians motivated by God's love and acceptance are secure and joyfully obedient Christians. A Christianity that only focuses on what we should do really becomes inadequate. And so part of the thing that we talked about in terms of being living sacrifices or giving our bodies that way, and essentially saying giving our lives that way, is this whole thing of being transformed, being changed, becoming more like Jesus. And the key thing that he talks about in that passage is this whole thing of renewing our mind. <laughs> and how we think makes all the difference in the world. Okay? How we think affects our behavior. <clears throat> and so I hope that you've at some point uh, thought about that during the week or have at least certainly been living that way. Uh, today we're going to carry on in chapter 12 and it's really a further, um, some further stuff in terms of what it means to live a life of sacrifice to God. And um, the, the thing that we're going to see today, the key way that he talks about here in terms of how that works itself out in our lives is that we will serve each other. We will, we will be thinking of each other, we will be doing things that we can uh, with the things God's given to us in terms of serving other people. And so I want to call my uh, message today Living Sacrifice because I'm going to carry on. It is a carry on from the verses 1 and 2. Uh, serve with what you have. And so let's, uh, we're going to read Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 3 to 8, and then we'll break that down a bit. So Romans 12, starting at verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So let me just go through that uh, kind of verse by verse. Uh, first of all, uh, he emphasized this thing of know yourself. Uh, just to reread verse 3, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. How many of you have watched American Idol at some point or some show like that on TV? Most of you have. It amazes me the people that think they have this phenomenal singing voice and they're going to be the next one to win the whole thing and the judges go, eh, sorry, cut, you know. Um, they don't even make the cut and they're going like, they're walking away flabbergasted going like, they missed it, they missed the best person, it was me. There's a lot of people in the whole music area, and it applies to lots of other areas, who think that if just the right person would find them, they would make it big in music. <laughs> we can all be deceived in terms of thinking too much of ourselves, and he emphasizes that here, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Because... If we're thinking that way, we're wondering, why, is not every, why isn't everybody responding to me? <laughs> I've got what it takes. <laughs> uh, I've had people say, hey, I should be up on the platform, and you know, I, I should be speaking. I go, well, 
maybe you should start in a home group or something. <laughs> maybe you should start somewhere else on a smaller level, first of all. Let's, let's do that and see how that works. Um, so, equally though, I would say for us, but also don't think too little of yourself. And that's why I say uh, have a sober judgment of yourself. Have a right judgment of yourself. Because both, have thinking too highly and thinking too little, both are totally detrimental in terms of us serving other people. And that's his whole emphasis in this passage, is this whole thing of use what you have to give away, to give away to other people. And so... Um, that is, that is a huge key, and that's why he starts this way here. Uh, it's one of the biggest keys in terms of serving people. If we're not secure in who we are, if we're, if we're not aware of who we are, what God's given us, the gifts he's given to us, you know what? We will not be able to serve as effectively. And yes, that's a growing thing, and I understand all that. Um, but that's why he starts with this thing. Know yourself. Know who you are. Know what you have. By the way, with everything I'm going to say here today, the other thing that isn't in the passage uh, but, but applies just as much as this whole thing of know the season of life that you're in. Because we go through different seasons of life, and I've had various people beat themselves over the head, oh, I should be doing more of this, I can't do this more. You know, it could be a, a young mom with, with, you know, three, four kids at home, and why can't I do more stuff? Well, you're in a certain season of life. There's others of you that are on the upper end of the season of life where you just don't have the energy, you just can't do much anymore, and again, you could beat yourself over the head and say, oh, I just can't do that. Know your season of life as well, but don't use it as an excuse. Know yourself. Uh, very similar to this, or, or along this line, um, uh, David Ruse likes to use this, uh, our national leader likes to use this phrase a lot, stay in your lane. In other words, know, know where you are and where you're supposed to be. Don't try to be somewhere else. Because if we're trying to be somewhere else, uh, we're not serving with who and what we are and where we are. And, and so uh, he really emphasizes that in this whole thing. Uh, like he says, we don't all have the same function. Um, let me just say something. If you've been around the vineyard for a while, this is an important distinction. We have emphasized that all of us can serve with gifts of the Spirit, with all the gifts of the Spirit at some point. But he emphasizes in this passage that at the same time, we are not all the same. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about just the gifts that he mentions here. I believe I can function with a word of knowledge if God wants to give me a word of knowledge. And I've had various points where that happens. I believe I can function prophetically. And at various points, I have a prophetic word and it, it applies and I know it's God. But there are areas like that where those are not my predominant gift. <laughs> So I want to be open to however the Holy Spirit wants to use me at any point, but I do need to know what are the primary things that God's given me and says, heart, this is how I've made you, now use those to serve me. And so um, there's times where we have to serve in, in areas that, that aren't us, so to speak, um, but just because there's a need there, but predominantly we need to serve with how God's made us, how he's wired us. Uh, and so that's really an emphasis uh, in this passage. I'll say more about that in just a bit. Um, secondly, serve with your strengths. And the reason I say strengths is sometimes we get all messed up in our heads. We think, well, what's a spiritual gift? It's almost like I'd like to say, forget thinking spiritual. What has God given you? Serve with it. <laughs> and yes, there's spiritual gifts. Obviously, he talks about that. But use the, the predominant things that God's given you. He's wired you like this and, and use those things. Um, the emphasis here is on serving. Galatians 5.13 says, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Obviously, that verses in a bit of a different context, but this whole thing of serve one another in love. The more you and I serve, 
the more we will see how God's wired us, the more we'll see where we're effective. You only find out your gift areas and your strengths by experience. I remember years ago, it doesn't seem to be as predominant anymore these days in, in the church overall, but they used to have tests for, you know, what find out what your spiritual gifts are, you know, and you take these tests and I'd like to say, forget about tests. <laughs> Just serve. And if you're open to feedback, open to seeing how people respond to you, you will very soon discover, mm, that's not my area because I get really frustrated trying to do that. <laughs> or, you know what, I do this and I, I, I realize I'm a, I'm a help to other people. I realize that other people are encouraged, strengthened, etc. as I do this. Um, hey, th that seems to be a fit for me. And he really emphasized this thing of we have different gifts and we need to serve in those areas. And so I just have here, where, where do you fit? After, after you serve for a while, you're going to go, hmm, this seems to be uh, an area that I can serve in or areas. What seems to really work? Um, what is really frustrating for you? Don't worry about whether it's a spiritual gift or a strength. And, and then he says in the passage there, view yourself in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And, and various commentators really feel that what he's saying by that is on the basis of the power that God gives you to serve in that area. Is there the, the, the anointing? <laughs> I hesitate to use that word. But is there something that comes with it from God as you serve in that area? You just go, yeah, I can, I can do this. This works. Like I already said, at the same time, uh, I like to, you know, the 80-20 rule applies to a lot of things. I think it applies in this area. 80% of how we serve should be in our strength areas. Yes, there's times that I go pick up garbage in the parking lot, but I don't get a thrill out of doing that. <laughs> and most of you don't. But I know a guy sitting right over here, he just loves cleaning up around here. He loves pulling weeds, you know? Um, <laughs> the only thing is he went fishing for a few weeks and the weeds grew like crazy, so now he's got to get back at them, so. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we really appreciate people like this, by the way, as, as you guys already said. So, um, I've already emphasized this, but let me just uh, reiterate, we all have different functions um, verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Um, and he just really emphasizes this thing of we're all different. Uh, let, me, let me say this. It is so important within the church, within the body of Christ, that we learn to really have an appreciation for all the different ways that God has made us. And that can go a couple of different ways. Sometimes we find it easy to appreciate someone who has gifting or strengths in totally different areas than we do. Sometimes we have a harder time appreciating someone who has gifts in similar areas than we do. Because if we've been doing something for some time, for example, for myself, if I teach or lead or pastor the church, you do things intentionally. Why? Because you believe that's the best way to do it. But someone else comes along and does it different. You go, oh, they're not doing it the right way. Because <laughs> I found the best way to do it. Because <laughs> I've worked at this for a long time. Um, do you know what I'm saying? In, in similar gifting areas, learn to appreciate how God has wired people differently. They will teach differently. In my case, they will lead differently. They will, they will relate to people differently. They will pastor a church differently. And so this whole thing of, of God intentionally put the body together with diversity, and his intention is that there's unity within that diversity. And God intends that there is this mosaic of all different people and all different stripes and colors and ages. And, um, and so that's part of his emphasis in this, in this whole passage here. And so, uh, as we've been saying, the biggie is use what you have. All of us 
should be serving within the body of Christ, whether it's official you know, position or not, that's not the point, but all of us should be serving other people in some way on some kind of a regular basis with the things that God's given to us. And that can look all different ways. That's, the point is not how it should look. The point is that we should have hearts of servants and, and hearts of caring for other people. And other people may not even know that you're doing it. The point is that, that we, we use what God's given to us. And he just mentions a few of those ways. By the way, the things that we talk about here today are, are not all the ways. Okay, These are some examples of ways in which uh, we can serve within the body of Christ. So I'm just going to go through those uh, one by one. Uh, just for the sake of, of looking at those and, and uh, examples of those. Uh, prophecy, verse 6, if it is prophecy, use it in proportion to your faith. Um, I think we all know, or most of us know, what we mean by prophecy. It's, it's speaking specifically what God is saying to a specific person or to a specific group of people at a specific time. It's hearing what God's saying for that situation. Now, um, let, me, let me say something. This will be the experience of many of you as well. Over the years, I've had words given, if I could just say words given to me personally, I've had words given to me personally that are bang on. I mean, it is God speaking. <laughs> and as soon as that word's given, I know it's God speaking. But there's other times where someone's given me a word and I go, hmm, <laughs> not so sure, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and God tells us actually to test the words, test prophetic words. And sometimes some of us almost feel guilty, and I've had responses from different people. Well, somebody gave me this word, so I guess it must be God speaking, but I don't get it. Maybe it's not God. And so it's right for us to weigh a word that's given to us. But it also affects how we give words to each other. In other words, you give them with a submissive attitude, with a submissive heart. If, if we come, I'm not saying apologizing for giving it. I'm not saying that. But if we come and we're submitting a word to a person and give them the freedom to do with it what they need to do. And, and that attitude makes all the difference. But I want to really emphasize for different ones of you, some of you are way more prophetic than different ones of us. I believe we can all hear God at various points. All of us can function prophetically at different points. But there are different ones of you here or even ones that aren't here today that really, like that's your predominant gift. And you will function with that really effectively and I just want to say, especially to those of you, I want to encourage you, use it. Be listening. And that, that doesn't mean having to come up here all the time. Yes, let's always start small, okay? And then let's let it grow from there with all the gifts. Um, but use it within a, a life group. Use it to people and say, hey, I, 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 however the words come to you, Sometimes it's helpful, helpful to even say, hey, I, I had this dream last night, and I just I woke up, and I just thought of you immediately, and I think it's for you. I, whatever, okay? I'm just trying to pull something out of the hat. Um, so, um, and so I just have on my screen here, when receiving a word, test the word as well. So, uh, prophecy. Secondly, serving. Uh, if it is serving, let him serve. Let me go, I thought we were talking about serving with all of these. <laughs> Um, he's talking about some people and some of us who on a broader range just plain, hey, tell me what needs to be done around here and I'll just do it. You know, where do you just need a helping hand to do things? And some of you just, hey, that's, that's me. That's where I want to be. Like, I don't want to lead something. I'm not, I'm not a leader. I'm not a teacher. I, I'm not really strong on prophecy, but give me some things to do. Like, whenever you need, you know, whatever done. Uh, and and uh, there's people, there's various ones of you like, the, like that. The message translation says, if you help, just help. <laughs> Don't take over. 
okay? Um, you know, I just think of something like Alpha, for example. There's always things that need to be done. There's, you know, we got some great kitchen help that, that yes, you know. Um, okay, that, this is not insignificant. This is huge. I regularly go to our kitchen people right back there. Um, I say, you guys are making all the difference in the world in terms of this Alpha course working and some people coming to know Jesus, some people's lives being changed. Why? Because some people are willing to cook and willing to help with cooking, willing to clean up and do all that stuff. Teaching. Verse 7, if it is teach, then teaching, then teach. <laughs> I mean, plain and simple, right? If it's this, then do it, use it. Um, in all kinds of various settings, obviously this is one example, but in life groups, in courses that we do, uh, uh, even someone in Alpha, you're, you're facilitating a table, you're by and large facilitating that, but there's times to just give input and those little things can really help to clarify things. Again, let me, let, let me emphasize this thing of if, if you realize, hey, when, yeah, as I get into any kind of a teaching role, people really respond to that. People want to be there when I'm teaching. They, wanna, they, they want to hear, uh, and, it's, and I'm getting feedback that they really appreciate what I, what I had to say. Uh, I want to encourage you, if, you're, if, you're, if your gift is teaching, as he's talking about here, study. Uh, continue to develop that. Continue to grow in that. Encouraging. There's a number of you here who are fantastic encouragers. Uh, you come alongside people and you just, you just lift people up regularly. I've, I've been the recipient of that many, many, many times. Um, I'm looking for John. Did he take off on us? A funeral. Oh, okay. Um, John Briscoll is a fantastic encourager. I'm pointing where he normally sits. Um, he's a fantastic encourager. He just comes along, and it's, it's genuine. Um, I'm going to say this uh, later with something else. Please don't flatter each other. Flattery is empty, and, and it causes people to think the wrong way. Um, be genuine, but come alongside it. Like if you're an encourager, like I say, some of you are just, you just do that in, with, with letters, with cards, with emails. I, I could name, like I, there's some people in this church that you guys send me an email every once in a while, and it's, and it's not flattery, it's just plain, hey, you know what you said on Sunday, da 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 da, da really helped me a lot this week, da, da, you know, in this way. That's encouraging. Uh, and so, if you're, we should all encourage each other, okay? But there are some of you that are really good at it. And so use that, okay? To genuinely come alongside each other. Uh, contributing to the needs of others. <clears throat> now, we're all supposed to be givers. But there are some of you who... You just can give, you just love to give financially and probably God has enabled you to also be someone that can make a lot of money. And so you can just give and give and give and give and you love to do that. I, I know one fellow, I won't mention his name, uh, but he's in one of our vineyard churches uh, in Canada and he was a, he's a, he's a retired uh, businessman, but he was a very wealthy businessman. And God spoke to him so directly. And so he just gives money like crazy. He, he bought a number of cottages on a lake that's close to where he lives. And he has, sing, for the purpose of bringing single moms with their kids out there for a break at different points. Can you imagine? I'm just going to buy some more cottages on the lake so I can just, you know, bless them. Um, and so he's one of these guys who's just super generous with his money, but he made a stack of money. Um, and so for some of you that, that uh, you know what, 
it's real easy for you to give 30% away or 50% away. And, and if you're, it's a, it's a gift, okay? He's talking about it as a gift. Some of you have that where you can just plain give and give and give. And God enables you to just keep making more and you just give and give and give. We're all to be givers. But sometimes we take that 10% thing, okay, 90% is mine, God can have 10, you know. Um, actually, it's all his. <laughs> so, um, next one that he mentions here is leadership. Uh, some are specifically called to lead. And you know what, here's, here's one of the things of our culture that I think is a little bit whacked. Um, <laughs> We want to be inclusive of everybody, you know. We don't want to ever say that some people aren't included in this. And so I've been in setting, we're all leaders, you know. I think, yeah, but some people are just plain gifted and called to lead. Same thing as all the other ones here. Can we all lead in different places? Yes. But some are especially called to lead. And, and one of the things that I often say, let leaders lead. One of the problems in our country, in our world, and in the church at various points, is people who are not leaders are trying to tell leaders how to lead. And it doesn't work really well, because they're never in that place. They don't know what it takes to lead, but they're trying to tell them how to lead. And so one of the things I encourage leaders to do, as, as you've demonstrated faithfulness, you've demonstrated a true heart for God, a servant's heart for God, then we want to let leaders lead. We want to let them use what God's given them. Um, I know for myself, I've always led something since I was 14 years old. And it just, and, and for various ones of you, you just go, that's just something God's, given me but you know what to be a leader is no more up here than any other gift or vice versa it's all it's all the same okay it's just we just happen to all have different strengths that God's given to us and his point is use it use it for the building up of the body for the strengthening of the body for the building of God's kingdom for the hallowing of God's name Showing mercy, the last one that he emphasizes here. Serving the disadvantaged or less fortunate, the poor. Um, and again, some of you are just really, that's your thing. That's what you're, you're good at. That's what you have a real heart for. And, and uh, one of the things he emphasizes in this passage here is do it cheerfully. Because <laughs> sometimes you can get worn down in the process. The message translation on this one says, if you work with a disadvantage, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Again, with, with this one, I've, I've seen it, and, I, and we are, many of us can be prone to that. Um, if we have a real heart for something, we think everybody else should too. <laughs> we all, well, everybody should be doing this. Well, yeah, but you have a real heart and passion, passion and gifting for that, but someone else won't. And I remember, I don't know if any of you remember Peter Davids. He was, he's a, he was kind of our vineyard theologian in Canada for, for some years and, and uh, was really involved in Langley Vineyard way back when. And, and I, I remember being in a, it was a, some kind of a pastor's thing, I think, that we were doing or something. And, and I think we're talking about evangelism. And, um, and he made this comment of, and he's teaching, and, and he's a good teacher. Um, and he says, well, he says, most of my energy just goes into teaching. And I remember just as, er, but you should be doing evangelism. Because <laughs> I just really have a heart to see people come to know Jesus. And I, it kind of stuck with me. Yeah, he should be putting most of his energy into teaching. And, and so that applies to all these different things. Uh, it's for the sake of serving the body. Um, many other areas not listed here. These are just a sampling. Um, and like we've been saying, just do it.
So in summary, if you're gifted in whatever, or if you don't like the gifting word, if your strength is, and all of us have strengths. Um, I'm just thinking of this example right now. Um, I don't remember all the details, but it was, but it was a fella who was handicapped in some way. I don't know if any of you remember hearing the story at some point. He was handicapped in some way, and he worked in a grocery store. And he would regularly, um, I think on his computer, just put out little one-liners, and he'd, he'd, you know, just words of encouragement, and he'd, he'd have a whole bunch of those. And he would be packing people's bags as they came through the checkout in the grocery store. And he would throw these into their bags. And this went on for some time. And pretty soon, all the people coming went to where he was bagging groceries. <laughs> and people are trying to say, no, there, there's, there's empty, no, there's empty lines over here. No, I want to wait for him. <laughs> there's a fella who's handicapped. And he went, hey, here's something I can do. And, and guess what? In one sense, he was leading. <laughs> because people were following. People were all wanting to go there. So he's a fellow who didn't go, oh, I'm handicapped, I can't do anything. He found out what he could do. And God used it powerfully. And so... That's the thing that he emphasizes here for, for all of us. And so if you're not serving regularly, again, I'm not talking about positions. I'm not talking about official thing. I'm just saying we all should be serving in some way. Time to start. Within that, recognizing their seasons of life and all that stuff. Okay, I think you heard that from before. So um, let's, uh, let's have the worship team come up. And um, we're going to end with a song. But let me just say again, one of the reasons that God calls us together as a church regularly is so that we, we do interact with each other on these levels, on a, on a life group level. Uh, you see each other during the week. Um, but in these times... There's different people that need someone just to come and talk to them. Or someone needs to, hey, maybe you should just take that person out for lunch. Or um, maybe you should arrange to connect during the week. Or there's people here sometimes that are lonely, that are waiting for, they're trying to reach out, but um, they need someone to also respond to them. And so I just want to encourage us, and I'm not trying to prescribe what that looks like, just, but we always say be aware of that. Be aware of how we can come alongside each other. And even this morning, be aware of, you know, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes here. Um, but be aware of, hey, someone, yeah, I should go talk to that person over there. Or, oh, I just really feel like I should go pray for that person or ask them if I can pray for something. All of that is us doing the stuff that we talked about. But, of course, it's way beyond a Sunday morning. Uh, the ways that we talked about here this morning. So, let's stand together. Having said all that, I, we always want to be open to if, if God has given some of you that, are, that, are, that have shown some maturity in, in the prophetic area, um, if God's given you something for uh, this morning, we always want to be open to that as well. So Lord, thank you for the way that you designed your body. Thank you that there's hands and feet and arms and ankles and all the different parts. And I thank you for the way that you fitted us together. I thank you for all the different ways that numerous people in this church serve regularly. So Lord, I just pray right now for, for 
any of us that that just go, hmm, I, I, I want to serve, but I just don't even know where to start. And so I pray that you would just start putting opportunities in front of them where they could uh, just start to do that. Lord, we do want to just say again, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us who are followers of you this morning, that we do want to give our lives as a living sacrifice to you. We don't want to be about ourselves. We want to be about you. We want to be about your kingdom. And so, Lord, show us, uh, all of us, how we can be doing that, how we can serve. So during or after the song, if any of you want to come up for prayer for anything specific today, we'd love to pray for you. We, we know that God hears us. We know that God responds. And so we'd love to pray for you again this morning too. So let's do a song together here.